My name is Christina Stone Kaiser. I am cooking today, modifying a bit from a book called Skinny Taste, Fast and Slow, written by Gina Homolka. And today, the recipe that I'm making is, oh, I lost my page. It's a slow cooker bolognese. Let's see if I can get that to focus. It doesn't really matter because the picture is here. So she's putting this over a spaghetti squash. It's really just a meat sauce there, and I'm using a regular uh, pasta today. Actually, I'm using a chickpea-based pasta uh, because our family, for my sake, is gluten-free, uh, and there's a billion kinds of gluten-free now. There's rice, and there's corn rice quinoa, and there's lentil, and mung bean, and so many. Chickpea is a really great uh, one for fiber and protein all at the same time, so we're currently using a chickpea-based one. And I have already gotten going so uh, I've modified a lot in this recipe. This recipe would normally have started with a pancetta. Um, in my world, that would have meant bacon, but I hate opening a pack of bacon for like three pieces, so I didn't do it. So normally you would do the bacon, you'd keep the grease and saute your veggies, which were like two carrots, two celery, one onion in that bacon grease. For me, I just go ahead and combine my hamburger, with my veggies and let that juice from the hamburger uh, cook the vegetables as well. Uh, it's seasoned with a teaspoon of salt, a sprinkle of pepper and garlic powder. Um, the garlic powder is my addition because I like it. And so now we are at this space um, and just to like kind of say, right, everything was diced. So we have a diced carrot, we have diced celery and diced Oops, I dropped it. Try again, diced onion. So you could also food processor that, it wouldn't be quite as uniform. But so I have this difficult task now, which you get to be a part of with me, of trying to drain this. And this is such a heavy pot. So we're gonna do it together. You're gonna see me fail to some extent because this pot is so very heavy and challenging. But I like the pot, so I am choosing today not to utilize the slow cooker option, but instead to just go ahead and leave it in my Dutch oven. Uh, if I was going to be not here later today, the great thing about the slow cooker is from this point, you would transfer to the slow cooker, add your tomato sauce, your white wine, your, um, your parsley, and then you would just come home to this sauce that was ready. But you would still have to figure out, like, did you cook your noodles ahead of time? How did that part of it work? So I'm not gonna fail, this is so exciting. Okay, so the thing about these big Dutch oven pots, if you are slight and in all, like I work out plenty, it's not for a, a lack of being capable period, but they're just so heavy. And then you add all this extra food to it. So let me, at least take care of that. So when draining, um, you want to make sure that enough of that juice gets out that you feel comfortable with whatever's coming down. It takes a little bit of time with draining. I used to just dump and then go right back and it, it really does mess with uh, the flavor. So uh, the texture in your mouth after the fact specifically. So I let it go a little bit but you know, juices are awesome and they've got great flavor, but I used to even try, because this is meat from our parents' farm and it's relatively lean. So I used to try not draining it. I thought oh, it's, it's like way leaner than stuff I'd get in the grocery store. So maybe I don't need to drain it, but it turned out it really is better. I would still get that kind of feeling on my tongue of too much, too much of the protein fat more than I wanted anyway. So that's gonna go back into the pot. And I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse. And I'm actually gonna also clean down my sink a little bit here. Before we head back over, because I don't want any of these juices to congeal anywhere unfortunate. So, okay, you can come back then. And I'll bring you back as well. So we are in a really good space at this point. 
I've gone ahead and drained it. Our next step is the white wine. So for a single batch, you do a quarter cup of white wine. So I'm going with a half cup. And it goes in prior to your tomato sauce because you want it to kind of cook down a little bit, kind of cook out. It's going to flavor it, but it's not going to over flavor it. Um, also, she calls for this to be finished with some parsley at the end, some fresh parsley. I'm actually going to put parsley in earlier because I don't have any fresh parsley today. Um, parsley is one of those things I feel like, meh, I could take it or leave it. It's not the same for me as like a cilantro or something like that. Uh, so while that is cooking down, and it won't take long at all, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. So I have Tetra Pak crushed tomatoes today. Uh, these are as I understand it, great. You can recycle them. So I opened these uh, with my bare hands. I just ripped the corners off. And uh, so what would happen here, these are gonna go in, I'm doing a double batch, so I have two 28 ounce, two times, I have four total. Uh, later on, she also cooks with bay leaf. She'd throw that into the crock pot. I don't cook with bay leaf. I had like a huge thing of it forever. Uh, that was dried. I think fresh bay leaf would be way, way better, but I don't buy that either. So at the very end, a single batch would get a half cup of cream, of half and half. So I don't keep that on hand. I'm probably going to use a soy milk half and half in ours. Um, and then she would finish it with some fresh parsley, actually a fourth cup chopped. So I'll probably do like now when I dump in my tomato sauce. Um, three tablespoons of parsley. So, actually I can back you up because I didn't pull that out of the cupboard ahead of time. So that is how I am managing that. And if you had the fresh parsley on hand, I would say, yay, that's great. Go ahead and do it, it can't hurt. Everything tastes good with a little bit of fresh stuff in it. Okay, so I've given that just a little bit of time to cook down and flavor the beef. And then it's just a matter of pouring in, and I'm gonna, because I don't want tomato to come back. Tomato is a highly splattery kind of substance. I don't know why it has to be that way, <laughs> but it is. So, and actually, you guys, like I'm pretty excited. So, I have struggled to find Tetra Pak stuff that felt affordable. And this was the first time that I felt like, okay, it's a little bit more, but it's not like quadruple more. So I'm pretty excited to be getting to use these Tetra Packs today. Um, they're supposed to be way better for you, the BPA and the tin cans. Um, of course, I've heard all kinds of things that like, oh no, they fixed that with the tin cans. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I think everything's changing all the time and it's hard to keep up and I'm trying to do my best as are we all and so honestly that's the thing no judgment here like we are all trying to do our best we are all getting new information every day and I am just with you trying to feed yourself and your family is a big job and then trying to take in all the environmental stuff besides oof, it's exhausting so I'm almost there Almost got it. And again, this part would have been done in the crock pot if you were using her book. And then this would just simmer while you were gone on a low. You wouldn't need to do anything more than low. And depending on your crock pot, I would even consider on warm because um, sometimes they just cook really hot. But you know your crock pot. Don't do anything just because I said the word warm. So let me get this in all stirred together a bit. And if you're familiar with meat sauces, you know that that meat is gonna like destroy. It's gonna absorb all of your tomato. And if you were cooking with a crock pot, crock pots tend to add some extra water. So we're not gonna get that extra water with a, a pot like this. So if after you've added your half cup, or in my case, a full cup of half and half, you felt like you needed uh, a little extra liquid to make your pasta work, you could totally do that. Um, but these are fast and slow, her cookbook, meaning it should be able to be something you can throw together in under half an hour. 
and or it goes in the crock pot. And so, you know, I got that book when I had an infant in the house and it was true. I put so many meals together in 10 minutes and then threw them in a crock pot. And honestly, if it was like dredge it, dredge this chicken and that or whatever, I did not do it. Mm -mm. Because I did not need four bowls that I needed to wash while I was tending to an infant. So there's my parsley. And at that point, because you don't want to put your creams in early is the thing. They'll separate if they start to boil. That's why you always see creams added at the last possible moment. So later today, when I prep this for actual dinner, when I get it warm, I'll add the cream then. And so probably at the same time actually that I'm cooking the pasta, which in my case, my kids will need homework help. And so while I'm helping them with homework, I'll have this on low, I'll get the water boiling. And then um, at that very last, like as I'm draining the noodles, I'll add the cream to this and it'll be a done sauce. But you know, this way it's gonna simmer while I do other work because I work here at the house. It's gonna simmer while I'm doing that other work and all those flavors will meld together beautifully. And that's how it works. So hopefully you too get an opportunity to enjoy a good pasta sauce and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.